Welcome back, everyone. We get back on our nutrition presentations. A lot of you are here for that reason, and that's kind of our passion anyway. So we wanted to share a couple of things with you. We found online a 2017 scorecard on antibiotics, policies, and practices for different fast food restaurants and a few other types of restaurants, too. This is just about their meat. It just is what, what restaurants are the most friendly for non-antibiotic me and the ones who got an F. In no way are we discouraging you from going to a restaurant of your choice. You do whatever you want. Just know what you're getting into and what kind of food you're eating when you're there. So on this one for the scorecard, you have Chipotle and Panera got A's. Subway got a B plus, Chick-fil-A got a B, and KFC and Taco Bell got B minuses. McDonald's got a C plus. That is so funny to me that McDonald's got a C plus. I don't know why, but they're just such a fast food place. I would never have thought that. Wendy's has a C. And now we get into some the bad areas, I guess. D plus, Pizza Hut and Starbucks. D, Dunkin' Donuts, Jack in the Box, Burger King, and Papa John's Pizza. And then your F restaurants are Dairy Queen, Sonic, Olive Garden, Applebee's, Domino's Pizza, Chili's, Little Caesars, Arby's, IHOP, Cracker Barrel, and Buffalo Wild Wings. Now, obviously, there are a bunch more places that aren't on here, but these are the ones, I think, that are pretty much nationwide. So, that should help wherever you're living. Anyways, um, just something to keep in mind. When you go to restaurants and you make choices, just know what you're eating. Now, when we went to our holistic health practitioner, our voodoo doctor, one of the things she told me of is that I was low in zinc and I know a lot of you have asked what kind of supplements we take and so we've been a little bit slow in sharing that just because we want to make sure we know what we're telling you and I still don't know if I know what I'm telling you on zinc because I had to go study it too I didn't know that was such a big thing until she told me I was low on it so and I didn't even know why why I needed it so I've had to do my own studying and I'm going to share that with you this information comes from draxe.com d-r-a-x-e.com He's both a medical and holistic health practitioner, and we follow him like Dr. Hyman, who is also a medical and, and holistic health practitioner. They have really good information, and I like to get information from them because I feel like it's been studied and it's, it's probably a good source. So this is the zinc I take. It's from the Now brand. Our health practitioner told us now and nature's way are the two best vitamins to get, or those ones, the ones that she recommended anyways, because they don't have a lot of fillers and additives. So since I had no clue what uh, the uh, reasons I, for the, a person takes health or uh, zinc, the health benefits, I looked it up. So here we go. It increases immunity and fights colds. Acts as a powerful antioxidant that may help fight cancer. Um, balances hormones, fights diabetes, maintains heart health by supporting blood vessels, prevents diarrhea, increases fertility, aids in nutrient absorption and digestion, supports liver health, and helps with mus muscle growth. I almost couldn't say that. It helps with muscle growth and repair. Okay? The most common signs and symptoms associated with zinc deficiency include changes in appetite, including food cravings for salty or sweet foods, changes in ability to taste and smell, weight gain or loss, hair loss, digestive problems including diarrhea, chronic fatigue syndrome, infertility, hormonal problems including worsened, PM, worsened PMS or menopause symptoms, low immunity, poor concentration and memory, slowed ability to heal wounds, skin infections or irritation, and nerve dysfunction. And then, according to the USDA, these are the recommended doses for people. I'm not going to read them all to you, but I'll post them on our Instagram account. And you can go check that out for yourself and see maybe if that's something you want to start doing. And then these are the foods. The, that are it's high protein foods contain the highest amounts of naturally occurring zinc so these are the top, top 12 food sources of zinc lamb grass-fed beef chickpeas cashews pumpkin seeds yogurt chicken turkey eggs mushrooms salmon and cocoa powder so 
do your own research. If you think you might be zinc deficient, maybe go talk to your doctor or just see if that's something you want to start doing yourself. I don't want to recommend either way or tell you not to do it because I don't know what kind of doses you need or how to tell you to diagnose yourself. But that's just something we're just giving you a background and some information so you can start doing research for yourself and see if there's other things that you need to add to your diet. I was also told, told I'm low in copper and magnesium, and so we may do a video on that as well. I do take copper, um, and I don't know a lot about that either, so I will get more information and get back to you on that. But before we go, I just want to take a few minutes to talk a little bit more about our health journey and our weight loss journey. We've told you that we've lost a lot of weight. I've lost over 200 pounds, completely natural, no diets, no pills, no surgery, nothing like that. Just eating healthy foods, clean, whole, whole foods, one ingredient foods, as close to the source as you can get it. Now, I can tell you that we defied all conventional wisdom about weight loss when we were kids because we rode bikes, we played, we skated, all of that. We ran all over the town. And back in, when we were kids, you had to get around on your own. Your parents pretty much just told you to be home by the time the street lights came on and you were on your own. So we walked all over town, we rode our bikes, and we were very active. But yet Sandy and I were still chubby. And so, and we didn't keep snacks. My mom was not a snack person. I mean, she didn't really keep around a lot of snacks in the house. And and uh, she made her own food. In fact, we always had homemade bread, which was really, really good. But we didn't sit around eating that all day, even though it was really fun to come home from school to smell that bread as you walked in the house. She'd always, she'd always let us have a slice with, hot slice with butter on it. So that's a good memory. But still, we weren't eating a ton of that. We just ate our meals and uh, still had a problem with being chubby. So that went on into adulthood. And of course, I even had a doctor put me on a thousand calorie diet. Well, now we know that's unhealthy. That's too low, especially for a teenage girl or I might have even been preteen, either way, uh, that was really harmful to your, your metabolism and your, just your health. You're not getting the nutrients you need. So clearly doctors didn't even know what the, the solution was. They just knew that calories in, calories out, and it's a lot more complicated than that. Calories do not equal across the board. What you get, the calories you get out of a Snickers bar is not the same as you get out of a carrot. It just isn't. So um, but now we know that and a lot of this has just come out in the last decade or so and So it's not that we never wanted to lose weight or that we quit trying at any time There were times that we'd feel like giving up and for a day or two We just think I can't fight this anymore. I don't know what to do anymore. We've tried everything We've been to every weight loss program. We've tried on our own. We've counted every calorie We've walked five miles a day that was supposed to to make you lose weight in fact one summer I got up and walked with my nephew at six o'clock in the morning and uh, he was getting ready for hell week for football going into ninth grade and we'd walk at least five miles every day. I gained five pounds that summer. So that clearly was wrong information. Not that it's not good to exercise, but still that wasn't the solution. So we just were tired and it was discouraging and everything that came with it and exhausting trying to fight this battle. So you may, you may, have those same feelings too and hopefully we can give you information that'll help you be able to fight your own battle a little better armed with knowledge and understanding but it was also embarrassing i guess or just isolating to feel like when you'd go somewhere you didn't know if you were going to fit is a seat going to be wide enough going to a baseball game those seats are really narrow and movie theaters have come a long way they now have moving arms and and make it a lot more comfortable for obese people but still it's just an isolating feeling, not knowing if you're going to be able to fit. Try to go, go to an amusement park. You can't fit in any of the seats. You can't hardly even get through the turnstiles. You have to go through the handicapped entrance in order to get in. And I don't feel like companies understand that. They have a one-size-fits-all um, solution or, or place setting, I guess, for everyone. And it doesn't work for everyone. We live in a country that has a lot of obesity going on because we have a lot of we have a lot of choices and people don't have all the information. It's not your fault. It's not their fault. And food isn't the same as it used to be. And that no. has caused a lot of this problems, well, these problems as well. As soon as food started, started getting genetically modified, it became a bigger problem because food isn't the same. So when you think you're eating wheat or whole wheat, you probably aren't. It's probably been genetically modified because a lot of the wheat companies now hybrid and genetically modify their wheat. So even eating whole grains can be a tricky 
uh, solution just because you may not be getting the whole grains you think you're getting. But, the, you know, you do your own research on on all of that. So it was very isolating, even though I had friends and family support and people liked me just for who I was. And that was nice to know. Try being an obese person. You can really learn a lot about a person's character that way. Actually, don't try being an obese person, but I have learned a lot about character by living that life. You can tell who likes you for you and who judges you for the way you look. And it really is an eye-opening experience to have that kind of uh, access to the way people operate. So with all of that in mind, it was 20 or so years of studying to get us to the point the information was evolving, trying to help us out. Should you go gluten-free? Should you go soy-free? Whatever, dairy-free, whatever the case is. Should you just eat all vegetables? I, that seemed like that was a harsh solution too, but that's about where I was at was how do you do that? And we tried the prepackaged meal plans, all of that. So we finally have got to this point and um, learning all that we did. I never want to do the surgery. If you've had the surgery or want to do the surgery, that's your up to you. That's your personal life. You make the choice that's best for you. I didn't because I felt like that didn't fix the missing puzzle piece in the problem. All that was doing was, was and I didn't even have my gallbladder out, as I told you, so I really was would have been scared to go do that because that, in most of them, there are lap bands and some of those that are reversible, but in some of those surgeries are irreversible if you get side effects. And some people I know who have had the surgery have had some horrible side effects. So that's a decision you'd have to make on your own if that's something you feel like you qualify for. You have to do your own research. Just make you sure you do all the, your own research. But for me, I just felt like there was a piece missing. And if I could find that piece, I could make this all come together. And I feel like we have. We found the missing piece. Clearly it worked. We went into this as our own guinea pigs. Um, just not, not counting anything. No calories, nothing. We just ate whole one ingredient foods and made sure we had healthy choices and made a good balance and it worked the weight fell off. I also though in my journey uh, didn't want to inflict my now health choices, especially my poor now health choices, on the future of anyone in my family. I don't have children and it would have been my nieces and nephews stepping up if they, and I have great nieces and nephews, they probably would have, but it's not their job to give up their life to take care of me because I made bad choices in years previously. And even if you do have kids, I, obviously they will come and help you. They should, that's their job to come and be there for you. But you would want to make the impact, or I feel I wanted to make the impact as small as possible and make, my, make some healthy choices now that would impact my future in a positive way. Even if I end up in a nursing home, I don't wanna be the person there who requires all the attention because I made some really bad choices now. And again, it's not your fault. It wasn't my fault that I was making bad choices. I didn't have the information, but I do now. And hopefully you all are, will be doing your own research and some of the things we are able to share with you will help too, and you'll be able to impact your future. Even if you don't impact other people's lives, you wanna enjoy life, enjoy, we wanna travel. And we still traveled when we were fat, but it was a lot more uncomfortable. I walking 10 miles in Washington, D.C., we were sitting down a lot, but we still got it done. But now we want to go back to Washington, D.C. is in the size we are and see how far we can get and how many places we can go. It's this path and this journey, even though I've given up eating cakes and cookies and all of that, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything because I have peace and I have freedom now. It's been very liberating. I can do the things I want to do and I can live the life I want to. And I do not have to be tied down by the gel of my my addictions to cookies or cakes. I was my own prisoner. I had the key to release me from the prison by learning what I learned. And so hopefully we're helping you to get that step closer to, or you help us too. You let us know of anything you learn because we're still on the path trying to learn all we can and still studying. I just learned a whole lot about zinc. So um, hopefully that helped you. And if you know things we don't know, which is probably a lot, let us know, leave comments, but we appreciate you following us and like and subscribe, send your family and friends over and we welcome your comments and appreciate your input and appreciate you following. So have a great day.